Hello everyone, I'm John Camus here. We're at the Church of Saint Jean Baptiste on 76th Street and Lexington Avenue. And today we're celebrating the second Sunday in ordinary time. Christmas is finally over and we're beginning just the ordinary reflections of Christians. That's what we're doing this week. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, you are the Lord of life and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring us truth and grace. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. God, our Father, help us to hear your Son. Enlighten us with your word that we may find our way to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So our season of reflection on Christmas and what it means that Jesus was born, what does his presence in the world have to do with us, we're moving out of that time of the year. And we're moving into what we call ordinary time. So today, we begin ordinary time by thinking about our call that God has called each one of us. So we look at some other people who are called. We look at uh, Eli, the prophet, uh, uh, Samuel, the prophet, and we look at some of the disciples, John and Andrew and Peter and James. So let's begin with the story of Samuel. Samuel was a little boy. Uh, he's been given to Eli, who's a priest in the temple, uh, to raise him and to teach him the ways of the Lord. So Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. And the Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. And again, the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. And the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. And getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. So here we see the child, young Samuel being called. And it's always kind of a game in some of the Old Testament stories, the way God calls. And here he keeps calling and calling and calling. And it takes a while for Samuel to understand what's happening. Even Eli, the old priest, it takes a while for him to understand. So part of the element of our looking at our being called is that it takes a while to understand or to hear the call clearly. So let's look at the Gospel reading now. This is taken from the Gospel of John. So John the Baptist was standing with two of his disciples as he watched Jesus walk by. And he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him, and he said to them, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that whole day. It was about four in the afternoon. 
Andrew and the brother of Simon Peter was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah. But he, then, he, then he brought him to Jesus and Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. So this story uh, is a, again an important one. Uh, we're looking at the call of the disciples and it begins with an insight. Right? John the Baptist uh, sees Jesus from afar and the Spirit gives him that enlightenment. He knows this is Jesus. This is the one that we're waiting for. And But besides that, he, he sees inside of Jesus. He sees what he's all about. And he calls him the Lamb of God. He sees Jesus for what he is, that, that, that redemptive quality that he's going to be carrying throughout his life and finally consummated on the cross. The disciples hear it, they follow Jesus right away. Right? And they, they, he says, what are you looking for? And, you know, they simply you know, re reflect their, their own, well, you know, where are you staying? They don't know what to say to him. Where are you? Where are you? Who are you? What are you? Where are you staying? And they, he, he brings them. They stay with him the whole day. And it's a momentous moment. It happened at four o'clock in the afternoon. Right? That's the way it's put. So this moment of enlightenment, they see him for a second, who he is, comes in a flash. But it's enough for them to start calling others, come follow us, we found him, we found him. Okay. I'd like to just use our church a little bit for our reflection today. When I stand at the altar, here at St. Jean's. I face the back of the church and I look at a stained glass window which is above the central door of the church. It depicts John the Baptist pointing at Jesus as Jesus walks by. Andrew and another of John's disciples look on. And under the scene are the words, Behold the Lamb of God. The window is speaking the words of John the Baptist. So those are the words that welcome any visitor that comes here to St. Jean's, Christian or non-Christian, behold the Lamb of God. Now behind me as I stand at the altar with its gleaming sunburst monstrance on the high altar, it's about 40 feet above the sanctuary, John the Baptist appears again. He stands as the base of the sun with his arms stretched above his head and his index finger points to the host that's in the center of the sunburst monstrance. Here, he witnesses to Jesus a second time. Behold, the Lamb of God. In the evangelist account of this moment, Andrew and the other disciples followed after Jesus as soon as they heard his testimony. After a few moments, Jesus turned around, looked at him and asked, what are you looking for? Jesus asks the same question of everyone who walks into our church. His question defines our ministry. Through us, Jesus gives the same answer he gave to Andrew and the other disciple. Come, and you will see. As we begin a new year, let's recommit ourselves to Father Amard's charism of invitation and welcome. Let's raise our arms and silently point to the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Let's invite everyone and anyone to bring their burdens to lay them at the feet of the Lamb. Let's encourage them to breathe deeply, to fill their lungs with the breath of the Spirit. Let's help them listen to Jesus' message. Behold, I make all things new. Let's move on and gather our petitions now. So God's called each one of us by name. That's what teachings are telling us today. 
and we present ourselves before the Lord as we respond to that invitation. So we pray for the church. May we invite others to be to follow Jesus by the witness of our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for the leaders of nations. May they learn to work for justice and uphold the dignity of every person. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for Christians around the world. May they be a source of reconciliation and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. And may all of us heed the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., and continue to inspire ourselves to overcome injustice, racism, and equality, and poverty. Let us pray to the Lord. And we lift up our personal intentions now for a moment. So Lord God, you teach each of us by name and invite each of us to share in your son's mission. Grant the prayers we make as we respond to your call. Grant this through your son, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. The fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And we pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the church. Lord, may we celebrate the Eucharist with reverence and love. For when we proclaim the death of the Lord, we continue the work of his redemption, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. With love, we celebrate his death. With living faith, we proclaim his resurrection. And with unwavering hope, we await his return in glory. Now, with all the saints and angels, we praise you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy, indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this all of you and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world.
and make us grow in love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So we pray the Lord's Prayer now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with all of you. I think at this time we could certainly add a prayer for peace in our world. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul will be healed. Let us pray. Lord, you have nourished us with bread from heaven. Fill us with your spirit and make us one in peace and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Mass is ended now. Let us go in peace, to love, and to serve the Lord. So have a good week, everyone. And we'll see you next Sunday.